So today is uh, Wednesday the 24th of June and I'm uh, standing at the end of the trial at Hinton Waldrist. Um, and having done some videoing with colleagues the other day, um, looking at the varieties with, uh, with John Miles from KWS, and uh, my colleagues Rosie and Gareth having done some videoing looking at um, particularly yellow rust levels in the Dunstan and how different treatments had done on that, um, I thought I'd skipped over um, the blocks of barrel and um, elation that I mentioned in the introduction to what's at the site um, this year. So the reason I've skipped over them, as you can probably guess, is they're both very septoria susceptible um, varieties. And in a year like this, where you know yellow rust has probably been the major disease, and now indeed, as I'll show you perhaps in another video clip, brown rust is coming in as the secondary pathogen on top of that in a number of these varieties. Um, septoria has taken a bit of a back seat um, and to show you just the sort of levels of septoria we do have in the trials uh, here I thought I'd just uh, have a look in the barrel and the elation to show you just how low some of these these levels are this season. So this here is a completely untreated KWS barrel which I think from memory on the list has a 4.3 rating for septoria and normally by this point in june we would expect you know leaf two to be heavily infected even here at hinton which is a low disease site um, and the flag leaf to certainly have lesions on and as you can see in here there are lesions about within the crop but there's plenty of flag leaf green leaf area still there leaf two is pretty good leaf three you've got to get down to really before we're seeing even in this untreated levels of septoria of any great degree in there and even some of the leaf is probably dying off more to potentially lack of moisture or just lack of sunlight getting down there by this point rather than any level of disease. Now that might change, um, there was a reasonable degree of rainfall um, Wednesday night, Thursday morning last week, uh, 30 odd mil um, and that may cause in a week or two's time if the crop hasn't died off with this high temperatures we got later this week uh, to have some disease moving further up the crop but we'll just have to wait and see on that one. And then as a comparison to that untreated this is what you might call a, a fairly typical program for a weak septoria variety like barrel. So this has had um, 100 grams of tebiconazole at T0, it then had a litre of Ascra at T1, it then had 1.2 litres of Ascra at T2, and then in the last week or so, it's had a litre of Firefly um, as a um, sort of T3, more of a, a foliar top-up really for rust than um, a proper ear spray. It was too late um, to get any fusarium activity. So is there a difference um, between this and the untreated? Yes, there probably is, um, and you would say, you know, even here in a low disease pressure, certainly less early lesions up on leaf two and flag than there was in the untreated and leaf three definitely has a bit more green leaf area than that untreated had, but nothing like the sort of differences we would see either here at Hinton Waldrist or certainly at Callow um, over in Herefordshire in a variety like Barrel where, you know, a treatment like this would look considerably different to our untreated plot by this point in June. And then just as a comparison, I've uh, also just stopped at this plot here, which is exactly the same as what I've just mentioned to you with that uh, Teb followed by Ascra, followed by Ascra, followed by Firefly program. Um, the difference here is that in with the T1, there was put a litre of Folpet. Um, and whereas perhaps we have seen in this variety and weak varieties particularly a benefit to that multi-site going in um, with the Ascra um, at the T1 or indeed the T2 timing, um, this season I think it's very difficult to pull out any benefit at all from having the multi-site in there from a disease control point of view in a year like this. Now from an anti-resistance point of view and of course with hindsight then you would always have it in, probably at one of the two timings rather than both. But uh, you know, this season there certainly is, is less of a benefit to be seen, even in a weak variety like this on barrel. And just for comparison purposes, this is um, another variety that uh, scores very poorly for Septoria. I think it's another 4.3 um, on the list. This is the elation, and this is a trial we have here where we're looking at T2 products. Um, and see how they compare, including some 
newly available and soon to be released chemistry uh, to the market alongside the sort of old stables of Aviator, Ascra um, and Elatus within this uh, particular trial. This is the untreated again, very, very clean. There's no way you'd expect elation to look like this most years. As with barrel, septoria lower down in the canopy, you know, probably leaf three, leaf four, that sort of level. Um, and having looked at the treatments, you know, as with that barrel, very, very little difference between any of the treatments used all of them slightly better here than the untreated. Probably looking in there, there is a little bit more septoria in here, in this elation higher up the canopy than there is in the barrel. And then as a comparison, we come to the other end of the recommended list for septoria scores um, with an 8.1. This is completely untreated KWS X days uh, within the trial here. And you can see it's not completely septoria free, but you're looking much more down towards leaf four to find any active levels of, of disease in here. Top three leaves generally pretty clean, sort of uh, a few scars, a few sort of marks on the leaves, probably more from sort of physiological effects than anything within this. There's a very good video also on the site between my colleague Gareth Bubb and uh, John Miles of KWS discussing KWS stays um, and how we use it both as uh, a tool against keeping septoria out of our, our crops um, but also how to steward it for resistance management. You know, yes, it's definitely a variety we can spend less money on, uh, on the fungicides, but at the same time, much like a fungicide, we don't want to break it by not doing anything appropriate uh, on the variety at all. You know, they are a useful tool in the armory, particularly with the loss of chlorothanolil um, within our portfolio to grow these sort of stronger septoria varieties, um, but they are not unbreakable and uh, we must think to the future as to how we how we look after them maybe that is still sensible programs just using lower doses of the chemistry we have available to us if we then look in a, a treated plot of kws six days here you can see not greatly different to the, uh, the untreated we've just looked at there probably is a bit less disease in here so the fungicide has done a pretty good job of clearing out maybe any septoria that was coming into leaf three or indeed down onto leaf four in here but as you can see you know the genetics of the variety is doing a lot of work for us and that is that is very very helpful as we get further levels of resistance building to the groups of chemistry that have activity on septoria i.e the triazoles and the sdhis um, but also as i've said before in the untreated talk you know the loss of ctl cannot be underestimated in here yes we have folpet still available to us it is less effective it is slightly more expensive at the moment you know but it needs to be fitted into the programs the question is just where what timing and how many applications.